Welcome to the Seismic Sister Show. I'm Kim Christensen, the founder of Seismic Sisters. Democracy saved, history made. After four terrifying years of authoritarian style leadership, the majority of American voters rejected that path and made a course correction at the 11th hour to save our democracy by voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. This year and the 2020 presidential election will go down in the history books as one of the most consequential in the story of America. While there's a mountain of work to do to repair, rebuild, and redesign our country, let's take a moment to celebrate the historic win of Kamala Harris as Vice President. On the world stage in her victory speech on November 7th, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris gave tribute to her mother, Shyamala Gopalan Harris, and to the generations of black women who came before her who believed so deeply in an America where a moment like this is possible. It was a beautiful tribute to the love and work and ambition that one mother poured into her daughter and to the freedom movement work by so many black women which allowed her to soar to these great heights. Black women truly did lead the Democratic Party to victory in this election. And it was heartening to see their work recognized for a change in the mainstream media. From Stacey Abrams of Fair Fight to Latasha Brown of Black Voters Matter to Amy Allison of She the People and Alicia Garza of Supermajority and Black Lives Matter, as well as others. These brilliant women have been organizing, strategizing, and building infrastructure for years leading up to this moment of victory. And they're just hitting their stride. Their leadership is showing the way on how to build diverse coalitions to tackle racism, dismantle unjust systems, and to build power for progressive good. While a record number of voters decided to save American democracy by voting for Biden-Harris in this election, we're not out of the woods yet. The current president can do a lot of damage in the next 50 days before Inauguration Day. So you can put the champagne in the fridge, but don't pop the cork yet. Keep your sneakers ready, hopefully not for another women's march, but to prepare to dance in the streets when a certain someone leaves the White House for good on January 20th, 2021. But only dance in front of your own home for a few minutes, socially distanced, while wearing a mask, because COVID-19 is still going to be the biggest buzzkill of 2021. There's more coming up on the Seismic Sisters show, including the Political Report by Kimberly Ellis, information about Black Queer Groceries, a new mutual aid organization in the Bay Area bringing groceries to the Black, trans, and queer community during the pandemic. We have a profile on the brave and bold journalist Dina Takuri, who covers conflict zones, culture, and communities around the globe. And we have a celebration of muralist and social justice activist Juana Alicia, whose colorful murals can be seen all over the Bay Area. And finally, we present the next part in our original sketch comedy series called Lucky. So settle in and enjoy the show. Hello everyone, this is Kimberly Ellis with the Political Report for Seismic Sisters. Well, make sure you wear your shoes. There's glass everywhere. First off, a huge congratulations to California's own vice president-elect, Senator Kamala Harris, on shattering one of the highest and hardest glass ceilings. We can't express the incredible joy we have in our hearts that the first female vice president in the United States of America is a black and Asian woman from Oakland. Now that's what we call California dreaming. Roller coasters and roadblocks. From election night intrigue to transition drama, the last few weeks have been a roller coaster of a ride, and the end of 2020 cannot come soon enough. While President elect Biden begins the process of building his White House team, the loser in chief continues to throw up roadblocks in his ongoing futile efforts to stall and delay the inevitable. And at this rate, there's no doubt the last two months of this defunct administration will feel like another four years. Well, we're officially in lockdown mode. Just when we thought things might be opening back up again, the COVID crisis is not only not getting better, but in fact, it's getting dramatically worse. 
with more than 180,000 new daily cases reported, a record 89,000 plus people in the hospital nationwide, fatalities hitting 2,300 per day, and many states tightening restrictions, including California, where the number of new daily cases has doubled over the last week. All of this has prompted Governor Newsom to put a damper on our Thanksgiving and holiday spirits by pulling the emergency brakes on reopening. I guess it'll be turkey, stuffing, and Zoom on the menu this year. Well, hello, Dolly. Leave it to country music superstar Dolly Parton to put everyone in the gift-giving mood. The Grammy Award-winning icon donated $1 million to the COVID-19 fund to help support vaccine research. I guess you could say she wanted to make sure the pharmaceutical companies would be working nine to five to try to find a cure. Well, that's it for this edition as we officially start the countdown to the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021 and a brand new chapter in American politics. We cannot wait. Thanks so much for tuning in. Keep up to date online at www.seismicsisters.com. We'll see you next time. Hello, I'm Erin Sweeney with Seismic Sisters. I'm here to share stories of caring people in San Francisco. Black Queer Groceries was founded by two friends who've experienced their own food insecurities. When Brianna Johnson and Chantel Hurd posted their first request for donations, they started with the goal of providing Black, queer, and trans folks with contactless grocery delivery during the pandemic. In the last 16 weeks, they've helped over 160 people to receive healthy food safely. Because Black, trans, and queer folks often face racism or antagonism, even within LGBTQIA spaces, Black Queer Groceries has maintained a clear vision of supporting this specific community. Recently, Black Queer Groceries has expanded into rent assistance and online interpersonal community support. Black, trans, and queer individuals and families fill out a simple form to be considered for assistance. One recipient posted their thanks saying, my fridge was more full than it's ever been. Founders Johnson and Hurd are making a seismic difference in the black trans and queer community in San Francisco. Journalist, producer, and storyteller Dina Takruri has built a brilliant career in digital news media. Known for her insightful video reports from complex zones around the globe, Takruri covers the human impacts of natural and man-made disasters. She has reported on the devastation from wildfires in Northern California, hurricanes and environmental conditions in Puerto Rico, and the coronavirus pandemics toll in San Quentin prison. Curiosity, empathy, and grit are her signature traits as a reporter. We are excited to share this very personal interview with Dina Takruri. You can now check out the interview at our website at seismicsisters.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye. I'm Polina, and this week on Art in Power, we are featuring the extraordinary muralist Juana Alicia. Juana's work can be seen all over the Bay Area, and most notably on the side of the Women's Building in the Mission District. Her work has been featured all over the world, including at San Francisco International Airport. In addition to being a muralist that inspires social transformation on a grand scale, Juana is also an activist and an educator. She has been teaching for over 40 years and is currently on faculty at Berkeley City College. Highly recommend taking a stroll around the mission and checking out her extraordinary work. Hey. hey. What's going on? You won't believe what happened. Let me guess, you're so lucky. <laughs> You were walking down the street and somebody handed you a suitcase full of money. No. A free puppy. No. He said, hey, let me pay your college debt. Tristan, no, I'll pay I, it for you. I don't have any college debt. Oh, excuse me. You won the lottery. Oh, Tristan, actually, I'm really unlucky. 
You won't believe it, Tristan. I was driving down the highway. I was going the speed limit. I wasn't texting. I wasn't calling anyone. I was totally minding my business. As one should. Tristan, and then a cop, he pulls me over. And not only does he pull me over, Tristan, but he also made me get out of the car. Do you know how scary it is when a cop makes you get out of a car for no reason? And then, and then, Tristan, he decides to run my record. Hello, look at me, sir. I have a clean record. And it takes him 45 minutes to do it, Tristan. I am so late for work. And then after this, he walks slowly, ominously, back to my car and hands me a fix-it ticket. A fix-it ticket, Tristan. Now I have to go in, take time off of work, and get my headlight fixed. Yeah, that's what a fix-it ticket is. You just go and fix it. Tristan, I'm so unlucky. I'm done. What, Tristan? Did I say something? Hey, where are you going? Tristan, do you think you could get me his number? Thank you for watching the Seismic Sisters show. Don't forget to follow us on social media. You can sign up for our newsletter at SeismicSisters.com and please tell your friends. <laughs>